Good evening, everybody. I'll call the, uh, the meeting to order. Um, will uh, Kate or uh, Ellen Hughes please uh, uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kay. I'm sorry, Ellen. I know. One of those mornings is for you. Um, Look for a call of roll, please. Mayor Patricelli. Present. Councilwoman Tornsell. Present. Councilwoman Diana. Present. Today's the uh, first order of business, the uh, uh, reading of the minutes. Uh, Mayor, I make a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes from the uh, previous meeting. And I'll second that. Clerk, call the roll. Councilman Tornsell. In favor. Councilwoman Diamond. In favor. Mayor Patricelli. In favor. We start off? Uh, yep, the, the order tonight is going to change uh, real quick, Your Honor. We're going to do old business first. And with old business, I'm going to ask Nicole Correa from Community Choice Aggregation. Uh, to come forward and give a Hello, everyone. Um, Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nicole Korea. I'm with Mega CCA. Thank you for being here tonight. Some of you might have heard a version of this presentation. This is a slightly different version than the one that uh, my colleague did months ago, I believe. She did one that was kind of geared at the municipal officials. This one is a little more geared at residents so that everyone can understand the program. Um, MEGA is a nonprofit local development corporation. We are partnering with the city of Waterville and 13 other local municipalities to bring about a community choice aggregation in the region. Um, Albany, Synecdoche, and Troy recently joined, so we're at about 90,000 households in the aggregation right now. So what are we talking about when we talk about CCA? What is community choice aggregation? The basic idea to understand is that this is bulk purchasing of electricity. So similar to when you go to BJ's or Sam's Club and buy a 100 pack of toilet paper so that you get a better price per roll, it's kind of a similar idea but with electrons. So um, you're bulk purchasing your electrons with your neighbors and residents in all of these other communities to get a better price and to have better purchasing power to negotiate the terms on that. That's the general idea. You get a little bit more into the nitty gritty here. <laughs> um, when you receive your bill from National Grid, you'll get, you'll see two different sections. So there's this uh, delivery section at the top. It's usually a little more clear on your actual electric bill, but this gives you the idea. And towards the bottom, you'll see the supply services. Uh, the delivery will always be handled by National Grid. They own the infrastructure. They will get those electrons to your home. If the power lines are down, they'll maintain those. Um, that's, that's National Grid. That won't change. The part that we are talking about being different here is the supply services. Uh, right now, most of us get our electricity supply from National Grid. So your supplier says National Grid. Um, and they have real limitations based on New York State regulations about what they're allowed to do. Um, and they are allowed to go out to the market every month and buy those electrons at the market price. They can't negotiate, they can't do any bidding, um, they just buy it at whatever the price is. So that price can spike really high when there's a polar vortex or a heat wave. Um, it can go low when the price of gas is low. It just is very variable. <laughs> it's wildly variable. Um, who, some sets, people, who sets the market price? Um, the electricity market, the energy market, it, uh, it has, there's a lot of factors involved. Sometimes it's a conflict in the Middle East, sometimes it's the price of gas. Like gas. Yes. Um, right now you also, some people do get their supply from a third party um, energy services company or ESCO, and they do that individually. Um, these are the companies that you might see at the farmer's market, at the mall, sometimes they approach you in Walmart telling you that they can give you this great deal on your electricity, and some of them really can. They're on the up and up. Some of them, eh, maybe not so much. They're, they're still variable rates. Um, they might charge you a fee to get in and or out. Uh, New York State has shut down several of these companies recently. So it it's just can be hard to screen what the good ones are. But when you uh, are part of a CCA, the idea is that 
everyone in the CCA is getting their supply from the same energy services company that has been screened by Mega and has been part of a competitive bidding process. So everyone's with the same third party supplier there. There are a few benefits, there's like a few reasons why so many communities are looking at this right now. Um, this is new to New York State, but it has been functioning in several other states. Uh, it's really big in California and Massachusetts. Illinois has a really robust program. New York State wanted to put a lot of regulations around it, as we do, but it's really for consumer protection. So we work very closely with the um, uh, po uh, Public Services Commission <laughs> so to make sure that you, your city, and us as the administrator and the other ci cities and villages and towns and the aggregations are moving through in line with the regulations. Um, but there are some benefits. There are many benefits to this program. The first is that you have the chance to get better electric rates that are locked in. They are not doing that up and down thing. They are locked in for a contract period, usually about 18 to 24 months. Um, and that's typically lower than the average of the vari variable rates. And I can show you a chart of that a little further along. The other part of this that we haven't talked about yet is um, you have access to 100% renewable electricity through this program. So it's not a requirement, but it's an option that your electric supply and that supply portion of your bill could come from 100% renewable green electricity sources without putting solar panels on your roof or doing anything like that. It's just automatically your supply starts coming from those sources. And like we talked about, you have protection from those predatory practices of those not so great companies. This is, as I talked about with the regulations, there's a process in place that New York State requires each CCA and each municipality to go through, and we, as a partner with each municipality, are kind of ushering everyone through this process. So Waterfleet has already done number one. You have partnered with Mega on this program. We are in number two. Me and my team are out all over the Capital District. My other teammates are in Albany and Troy tonight doing similar presentations. Um, we are making sure everyone understands the program and what, what the CCA is all about. The next step, uh, your community has to have a public hearing and pass a local law. I believe here's a step for later in the month. Um, and then at step four, all 14 municipalities need to sync up because that is when we go to bid. So we're looking at about 90,000 households in the aggregation. We put together a competitive bidding process and these energy service companies have to meet the bid requirements and also really sharpen their pencils to get an excellent rate for the CCA. Um, people kind of wonder like why an electricity service company wants to do this, but the thing is, this is a really great way for them to get 90,000 customers without having to go door to door or talk to you at Walmart. <laughs> this is very appealing to them from that like acquisition standpoint, um, and it's really appealing to the residents and the communities from the competition standpoint. So we go to bid, then we go back to the municipalities and we say, here's the rate, the best rate and the best terms that we can get. And we show you two prices, the price for the traditional like brown mix from the grid, which is a mix of different types of energy, and the price per kilowatt hour of the 100% green electricity. At this point, nobody's locked into anything at this point. The municipality can walk away and say, yeah, not for us. Or they can say, all right, we're in and we choose the traditional electricity or the green electricity as the default. As a resident, you still have choice about what your electricity supply will be. So then this 5A is another round of education. So we're back out in the communities, but at this point it gets a little more interesting because we have the price. We can talk to you more about the terms of the contract and what you're actually getting. Um, step six is an opt-out period, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. And then step seven, the CCA is off the ground, the program is running, uh, and you're seeing that reflected in your electricity bill. We are expecting that to happen beginning of September if all of the steps roll around as we anticipate. About at every step of this process, we're communicating with the state and making sure everything is uh, in line. So CCA is the way the program is structured in New York State and most states because of how it works, is that it's an opt-out program. So you are automatically included in the CCA if you live in a city, town, or village that has 
that is participating, if you have your electric supply coming from National Grid, um, if you're a resident or a small business, they are also eligible for this, and if you don't have a block on your account. One reason you might have a block on your account is if you're enrolled in or eligible for HEAP, SNAP, or SSI. Um, if you or someone you know is a part of one of those programs, there is another program that is really fantastic that New York State is promoting called Solar for All. It's free solar, so you apply for this program and you just start getting solar credits on your bill. The money is not going to last forever for this program, so share that information and sign up for that now because free solar. It's pretty good. I have some information about that in the back of the table there. So the opt-out process, again, this program, the core of this program is education. So we're going to make sure you know how this works. You will get a, everyone who's eligible will get a letter in the mail from the municipality stating the price and the terms of the CCA and including this uh, pre-addressed, no purchase, no postage necessary postcard. You just drop it in the mail, let us know you don't want to be a part of the program. Or you can also do it by phone or online. Um, if you do it within the 30-day period, you're never a part of the program. However, if you decide down the line you don't want to be part of the program, you can, you can just opt out at that time. There's no fees, no penalties for that. Um, the only difference is that there might be a lag just due to a billing process, like for how long you're in the program. Um, there's also, if your community chooses the default um, to be the traditional energy mix, and you want the 100% green energy, you can opt up to that choice, or vice versa, you can opt down. So the core of this program really is bringing more choice to your energy buying and electricity purchasing, so that right now you're, you've got the choice of National Grid or a third party that you pick on your own. With CCA, you add to that mix the choice of community choice aggregation, 100% renewable, or traditional mix. So we're kind of just out here educating you about those choices and about how it all works. Does each choice have a locked-in rate? Yes. Yeah, you're always locked into the rate um, for the contract period. It's sort of like a fixed rate mortgage, right? Like you're locking into that that yes, rate. National good rates go low for some reason. We you can get out. CCA. Yep, you can get out and go back to national grid. I have a question. Yeah. Do you receive one bill? Yes, it's still all on the same bill. Okay. Second question: How does your company come into this? How do they make money? <laughs> it's a good question. The suppliers pay us. So we get a, as part of that RFP process, um, the suppliers pay a small portion on every customer that goes to the administrator. So it's not, there's no taxpayer money going to it. There's no um, individual And I ask, who are the suppliers? There's, we're, the bid process is open. Um, they have to meet certain requirements, so, which includes, being able to get the renewable energy, being able to get it from New York State sources, um, pr uh, proving that they have really good customer service, and being able to meet the uh, supply needs, right? The 90,000 customer needs. So it's an open bid process, and the last, we have another aggregation functioning in the southern tier. Um, we had about five different companies put bids in on that. And we're expecting more at this point. Does National Grid do business with these people? Um, they sometimes, yeah. If that when they go out to the market each month, the supplies could come from those. But um, these are many of them are companies that are trying to get into the market in New York State, trying to get into the renewable energy market, and this is a good way for them to do that. Thank you. How many households do you have to maintain to keep your program? Viable. We had to be at forty thousand to move forward, with the, to, for it to make sense. Um, but we have we far surpassed that at this point. But I mean, you say, say like, look at ninety, you know, they estimated ninety yep. thousand households, and everybody say, signs up. Six months, a year, two years down the road, half of them back out. Mm -hmm. they yeah, go, nothing they, changes. They, they go to that. Walmart and they yeah. feel or something. Now, how, how does that affect your? company. <laughs> it doesn't. The CCA continues. Everything is uh, part of that RFP process. Part of the contract is that 
this is locked in. Okay. You were talking RFP process and stuff like that. Are we, are, will you be going out to bid prior to us as a municipality stating yes, we're in? No, uh, we go out to bid before, yes, before the commitment, but then, yeah, the commitment happens after that price comes in. Okay, so it wouldn't be something that's done with the next meeting. The local no. law is the next meeting. Right. The next step of proceeding right. on so the, to being able for them to go to bid for us. Right. The local law is really broad. It's not specific to this program. It just enables the municipality to make a decision about a similar type of pro this program or a similar type of program in the future. Okay, so feel free to contact myself or my team. This uh, email address and phone number will reach all of us. Um, check out our website. We've got a ton of different resources up there, including interviews with Mayor Petroselli and uh, my teammate Katie about the program. And if you connect with us on social media, um, you'll find out about upcoming education sessions and see some other resources there. Thank you. Thank you. We have, uh, we have a report, reports from officers and committees. Brother, I believe uh, General Manager of Las Vegas has a report. Yes, uh, the mayor talked to us this morning uh, a little bit about keeping the council updated on the projects that we have ongoing. Um, I'm going to talk about two, and then Mark will uh, finish up on our red pipe. Uh, I received a call today from the Department of Environmental Conservation, and it was regarding the Admiral Cleaner site. And we got an update as to the demolition on that project. Uh, they're looking to apply to the city through our building department and uh, get a permit to start demolition on or about March 10th. Uh, and that point, the building will come down completely shortly thereafter, and then additional testing will start to go on. So we asked several questions along the way as to when will we see, uh, you know, fair ground. Uh, they got to do some remediation. Uh, yet they haven't done full testing uh, with it because there was uh, problems with the building right next door as to deterioration with the basement and the foundation. That's all been shoot up. Um, they had to take a chimney down because there was also some problems with that one. Uh, so at this point, they're ready to go forward with the demolition so they can continue testing. Uh, at the point when they get all the testing and evaluation done, they'll come up with a record of decision or a ROD, ROD. Uh, which will then tell us what we can do and look for with the development moving forward. Uh, from my perspective, development in that quarter is always going to be the highest and best use. Uh, I know there's also been uh, talk as to some uses potentially in that quarter, but this is probably one of the few opportunities we're going to get to get it right, to start the catalyst for economic development to spur in that uh, roadway. Uh, so we'll work with the DEC. Uh, they talked with us and we'll be able to have conversations as to capping techniques and how we can go forward in order for that development that we would like to see uh, to take place in the bulk of the future. So I think that was a fruitful conversation we had today. Um, and then the other project um, that we also had conversations with today was the bike path. Uh, you saw Bartman and Judas here a couple of weeks ago walking us through uh, the new bike path that we're going to have from along the Hudson River, which goes along into the city. Uh, we went through final mapping today made a few slight changes as to drainage uh, and so on. Uh, we were given a contract that they had already gone out to bid for, so we know the lowest bidder. Uh, so you'll see um, some contracts before this uh, council uh, within a couple of weeks, so the mayor can then act and get this thing going. We want to probably kick it off before March 31st, because there are some <laughs> environmental constrictions if we don't get uh, one of the trees down uh, on a timely basis. Um, and that's where that one stands. Any questions on those? And Mark, you have one. Seth, with, yeah. with respect to Avenue Cleaners, what's what's the plan with respect to uh, traffic on 19th Street or surrounding that? And did they say give you a, a ballpark figure about how about the disruption disruption on the street? Yeah, I and the traffic. I heard it today. Um, I don't know if, if we heard any different, but I heard it maybe at least about a two or three week 
okay. minimum uh, time right. here or anything different. Right. Yeah. Um, not to exceed into the traffic area, just taking the parking. Area. Okay, so it's right. not going to. So uh, 19th Street will be open at right. that spot, and it's not going to affect traffic. Correct. Only, 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 um, or not, ma not no major effect on traffic. Correct. The only restriction I was told today is going to be the um, alleyway. They'll close that down. Okay. I was going to tell you, they're not the slowest. <laughs> and then uh, we're doing the lead service line replacement program. We'll, we've sent the application to uh, the State Health Department, uh, who actually coordinates the grant for our city. It's a $542,000 grant. It's in two phases. The first phase will be the replacement of the water line on 9th Avenue between 19th Street and 16th Street, and then replacement of all laterals, lead laterals in that area. And then phase two of the project will be opening up to the general public to have any lead water lines that they have in their specific residence replaced. There'll be an application process. We'll do some outreach probably within the next couple weeks to advertise it and to get people more accustomed and more educated to what the program actually involves. Um, but we're moving pretty quickly on this as far as the application process and moving into a contract. Is that it? That's it. That's it. Um, I know you probably weren't prepared for it, but can you touch on the uh, street light status and maybe a couple of minutes on deferred license? Yeah. That, those uh, seem to be bubbling very fast. Right. So we had some conversations with the uh, New York Power Authority in regards to the purchase of street lights. Um, they kind of opened us, up, opened us up to some avenues from a maintenance standpoint, which was really our level of concern. Uh, if we purchase the street lights, how do we maintain them? Uh, but there seems to be a consortium of uh, municipalities that are going through this program, and the need is not only for the city of Waterville, but those surrounding municipalities to have that maintenance program as well. Uh, New York Power Authority is acting as kind of the broker in between the municipalities and the service. Um, so we got a level of comfort, comfort from that aspect. Uh, there's a large savings moving forward uh, if we purchase these street lights. Um, and there's a lot of uh, enhancements that we can make on the existing lights uh, with a lot of potential grant money out there as well. So the impact on the city from a financial standpoint, it, it seems to be getting less and less the more people that we talk to and the more that we bring in through this process. And we have the availability to make the street lights that we have, number one, a lot more cost effective, and number two, a lot more effective from uh, a brightness standpoint. Uh, and even have the control of uh, dimming or raising the level of light at any point in time. Uh, so those conversations were very productive. We were continuing forward on kind of the research to make sure that you know, we know what we're getting into if we decide to go through this process. And if you remember right, that's part of the uh, recommendations from the FRB. Correct. Yeah, so that's a big savings, right? I mean, that's it, it, yeah, the, the top of the, right? the top of the uh, subsidy from the FRB, or the, it was an incentive, right? Or the incentive that they have, and then the savings themselves. And then the FERC relicensing, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uvin, you have a question? Yes, weren't those street lights replaced not too long ago, maybe 10 years ago or so, on 19th Street? Uh, the city-owned ones? Yes. Yeah, so there's, there's two different ones. The ones that we would purchase are anything that's not currently the decorative lights that we own. We would purchase everything else, and then we would include, the new technology would be included in all the street lights. So there's sodium, high pressure sodium on 19th Street, and they'll be checked, they'll be swapped over to LEDs. Okay, did that. I'm sorry. I thought they already switched them to LEDs. Uh, I don't know. I don't There's know. They're already out there one day, yeah. and uh, working on them for over a week, each individual light. I thought they'd already converted to LEDs. But that's a possibility. I'm not familiar with. It seems they're very, very brighter. I know. Oh, that was maybe with the with the grant, the uh, LED grant that uh, we were talking about. They may have all been part of that. Okay. They they could have already been done. So they right. They wouldn't have to be. Correct. Right. They wouldn't have to. They wouldn't have to change. Because they are ours. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and then we have the FERC relicensing. The FERC relicensing has to do with uh, the Federal, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Uh, we have a, a hydro, uh, hydroelectric converter at the dam uh, in the Norman Skill that we own. So we have to go through a relicensing process, and once we get the license, it's good for 40 years, but obviously there's a lot of preparation, a lot of consultant work for us to get to that, that point. Um, the application is due on February 28th. Uh, we're moving forward with our consultants, and it seems that we're all hand-in-hand -hand with DEC now, and we're all singing kumbaya, and hopefully on the same page here, and we'll be able to get this kind of ironed out. We did have some issues. There's things that we need to consider. Anytime natural water touches an unnatural source, DEC gets involved in that. And when you talk about the water running through the hydro and then getting expelled out again, there's some concerns about that. So there's some concerns about how we deal with um, fish population downstream. Uh, believe it or not, we have to create an eel passageway, which allows the eels to get through the system without actually going into the hydro and getting sucked into the hydro. Um, so we're working on that, and there's some flow issues as far as how much water comes through uh, the dam at any given time. They want to make sure that we can continuously keep that flow regardless of the level of the dam. So there's some, you know, some engineering that has to take place there, but we're hoping, hoping that with the consultants that we have, we're going to be able to work through that process with FERC and with DEC and move everything in the right direction. Yeah. And we were, we were commenting that that was that was uh, the gist of that was in an email that we got the that we got the other day, but that Michelle from Michelle. Oh, okay. But, yeah. but I could I needed somebody to translate it. it was so yeah, scientific. that's why we were it saying was so it, it was it was English, but it, it was, was hard. I guess it was English, but yeah. I didn't understand. Right. I, I, no, couldn't, I, didn't I couldn't understand it. It was unbelievable. Michelle Stotler is our our consultant with right. uh, Gomez and Sullivan, who handles a lot of the hydro work right. and. Uh, She's been pretty good with dumbing stuff down for me, so I can understand it. So it's uh, it, it's been she's been a benefit to us, and uh, the lines of communication have been fantastic between us and, and Gomez and Sullivan. So um, if it sounds like I know what I'm talking about, it's only because I've been able to take the time with Michelle, and she can break stuff down for me. So good, thank you. Thank Anything you. else? Um, any other reports? No. <laughs> okay. Old business? Well, We're all done with old business. Okay. Right, then we'll move into new business. Okay. New business. The first resolution is number 9711. Is the Council of the City of Waterloo hereby authorizes and directs David Wheatley, City Clerk and Clerk to the Council, to advertise in the official newspaper of the city that a public hearing will be held in the J. Leo O'Brien Senior Center. Uh, Waterloo, New York, on Thursday, February 20th at 7 p.m. for the purpose of hearing those persons who wish to be heard regarding local law number one of the year 2020. This is a local law to amend the code of the city of Waterloo by adding a new chapter to be known as Chapter 146 Energy, authorizing the creation of a community choice aggregation program and adopting certain provisions to facilitate program implementation. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we move on that resolution. I second that. Okay. Uh, questions? It's just authorizing the public hearing, right? Just authorizing yeah. the public hearing. Yeah. Exactly the next step that was up on the board. The call of attention. Yes. Right. Anything else? No. All right. Call the roll. Councilman Tornsell? In favor. Councilwoman Diamond? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Resolution number 9712, the Council of the City Water Fleet hereby approves a municipal advisory services agreement with Munistat Services Incorporated with an office located at 12 Roosevelt Avenue, Port Jefferson Station, New York, 11776, to provide financial advisory services to the City of Water Fleet and further authorizes and directs Mayor Charles V. Patricelli to execute same. Mayor, I make a motion that we move on the resolution. And I'll second that motion. Okay. Questions? Uh, this is just a yearly agreement we have with Venusat. Um, they advise us on such things as uh, if we have a bond issuance or um, if we have any rating reviews that we, we need to have done. Um, they just advise us on what we should and shouldn't say or do. We've been using them for a while? Yeah. 
Right. <coughs> there are no further questions, I'll call the roll. Councilman Tornsell? In favor. Councilwoman uh, Diamond? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. The next is resolution number 9713. The Council of the City Ward of Leaf hereby approves an agreement between the City Ward of Leaf and Tabner, Ryan, and Keneary, LLP, with an office located at 18 Corporate Woods Boulevard, Suite 8, Albany, New York, 12211, commencing on February 6, 2020, and ending on December 31st, 2020, for representation in Article 7 proceedings pursuant to the Real Property Tax Law, along with other, other property tax assessment matters, and further authorizes and directs Mayor Charles B. Patricelli to execute the same. Mayor, I make a motion that we move on the resolution. I'll second that. Any questions on this? And Mayor, I just want—I I do want the minutes to reflect that uh, I, uh, my in my personal business, I have a relationship with uh, with Tabner Ryan and Kennery, that law firm. I don't currently conduct any business with them now, but I have in the past, and I may in the, uh, uh, in the future. And for that reason, I'm just going to abstain from any um, sort of comments or a vote in this matter. Thanks. Okay. Jeremy, you want? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, as indicated by Mr. Wheatley, um, this resolution, if approved, would uh, authorize um, the mayor to enter into an agreement with a law firm, uh, Tabner, Ryan, and Kennery. And specifically, there's a lawyer that works for that law firm, Bill Ryan, who uh, would handle um, the tax assessment matters for the city of Waterfleet. So, essentially, Article 7 proceedings pursuant to the real property tax law is when there's challenges um, uh, with respect to assessments and other tax matters that the city would need an attorney that really specializes in that area of the law to defend the city of Waterloo. So this resolution, uh, if approved by the council, would um, authorize uh, entering into an agreement with this law firm to have them perform those services for the city of Waterloo, and uh, we have utilized. Uh, this law firm in the past, and they have been, uh, uh, they've done a good job and have had some successful results for us. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Not call the roll. Councilman Torrenzello? Abstain. Councilwoman Dunn? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. The next is resolution number 9714. The Council of the City Ward of Leap hereby approves an intermunicipal agreement between the Town of Colony, the City Ward of Leap, for the removal of garbage, trash, refuse, and recyclables from specific locations in the Town of Colony, and further authorizes and directs Mayor Charles V. Patricelli to execute the same. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on this uh, resolution. I'll second that. <coughs> Questions? Is this, new? Explain. Is this, this is new? No, this is, we already have an agreement with the Town of Colony. It's the Maplewood area of Colony that we already do the garbage. This is just an extension of that This contract. is a uh, second year, right? Uh, this is our second year. I this is, is a, a second This is for year. a two-year contract. This is for a two-year, yeah. Just, just a couple. Do we, do we use our trucks? We use their trucks. We use our trucks. We use our, we, we use our trucks, yes. and we, we dump where? In town, town, town Colony? We can use Colony's land. And there's no, there's no fee for that, right? So <coughs> it's all free for dumping their waste in their landfill. There's no, right? That's correct. No fee. No. And we so have used their trucks. We are able to use their trucks when we need them. <coughs> and it's even not even on that particular day itself. So we can yeah. do it on any time we can use their trucks. Friendly, they're, they're friendly agreement, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. It's all part of it. Uh, <coughs> with the, the dumping and the good. Okay. Nothing it's a good deal yeah. and actually it's the nice part about it is instead of us asking and receiving shared services we're actually providing it so it's kind of a nice two-way street here okay call the roll councilman Tornsella in favor councilwoman Dunn in favor mayor Patricella in favor Resolution number 9715, the Council of the City of Waterloo hereby accepts bid, the bid from Slack Chemical Company Incorporated, located at 465 South Clinton Street in Carthage, New York, 13619, in the amount of $179 per cylinder for the year 2020, $189 per cylinder for the year 2021, 
and $199 per cylinder for the year 2022 for the furnishing of chlorine for the City Ward of Wheat Water Department, the lowest responsible bidder in conformance with the specifications, and Mayor Charles V. Patricelli is authorized and empowered to execute a contract between the City Ward of Wheat and Slack Chemical Company Incorporated. Mayor, I make a, uh, a motion that we move on the resolution. I'll second it. Is, is this the same chlorine that's been going on for a while and we've got a, a contract? It, it okay. is, yes. That's great. And there was only only one bidder, as you can see in the um, the resolution, and that was Slack. Okay. Okay. okay, call the roll, please. Councilman Fornsello? In favor. Councilwoman Diamond? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Resolution number 9716. The Council of the City Ward of Leaf hereby authorizes and directs David Wheatley, City Clerk, and Clerk to the Council to advertise once in the official newspaper of the City that sealed bids will be received in the City Clerk's Office of the City Ward of Leaf until 10 a.m. on February 25, 2020, for furnishing and installing a new roof on the Ward of Leaf Community Center located at 1501 First Avenue as part of the City CDBG public facilities grant. Specifications for said item will be on file and publicly exhibited at the city clerk's office during normal business hours. The council of the city board of Leap reserves the right to waive any informalities in the bid or to reject any and all bids submitted. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on this resolution. I'll second it. Okay. Explanation. What are you talking about? Church. Church? Church, right? Yes. yes. It's a church. Yep. And it's only part of the roof, right? Um, it's the south side of the roof, but we're also getting pricing on the north side as well. Okay. 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 And that's part of that was part of, that's part of the grant, correct? That is correct. Okay. Yes. But because that's grant? not part of the imminent threat, that has to go out today. All right. Um, how much is the grant for? Three hundred thousand. Oh. Okay. We're not going to get a three hundred thousand dollar roof, are we? <laughs> well, a lot of it went to demolition at the time. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Right. But, and then there's, uh, you'll see the next part of it is the heating. Yeah. The heating. Yeah. Okay. No other questions? Call the roll. Councilman Tornsell. In favor. Councilwoman Dunn. In favor. Mayor Patricelli. In favor. Resolution 9717. The Council of the City Board of Leap hereby authorizes and directs David Wheatley, City Clerk and Clerk to the Council, to advertise once in the official newspaper of the city that sealed bids will be received in the city clerk's office of the city ward of Lee, city hall until 10 a.m on february 25th 2020 for furnishing and installing a new hot water boiler system in the ward of Lee community center located at 1501 first avenue as part of the city's cdbg public facilities grant specifications for said item will be on file and publicly exhibited at the city clerk's office during normal business hours. The Council of the City Ward of Leap reserves the right to waive any informalities in the bidding or to reject any and all bids submitted. Mayor, I make a motion that we move on the resolution. I'll second it. Okay. Explanation. Same thing, right? Just for the boiler? It's for the boiler. What's the, what's the estimated cost on the boiler? The initial is about $10,000 which is pretty much almost a residential, it's higher than residential. Yeah. It's hot water too, right? Yeah. The only, sorry, the only issue may be if any of the, the current piping in there has leaks or anything like that. That's something that will be checked out before the bids are finalized. Okay. I'll leave this to Jordan and to Dave. Is there a possibility if the, if the bids come back uh, higher than anticipated that we could look at maybe replacement with a gas furnace, hot air, with the intent to possibly put air conditioning down there? Or should we go out to bid that way now for the best, best type of use? We could bid on a boiler because some of the components are already there. But right. if we look at trying to use the thing for alternative purposes, the building is, and if the bids come up too high, should we be putting in the language of possibly looking at an alternative system? Yeah, I think it's better to specifically advertise in the specs or have in the specs exactly what it is that we are intending to do or essentially in the alternative because 
you know, if you're going to advertise for something, you want to be obviously specific and, you know, whatever bids that are submitted have to meet the specifications in order to to at least be considered. Is that... Yeah. Well, I'm saying? seeing that we're going out for a new furnace here. And the alternative to that would be, you know, when, you, when you're, you're into using that building potentially and you got it during the summertime, getting a furnace, hot air, wood air conditioning, you'll be able to get a plenum mm -hmm. and we go forward that way. Are we looking maybe looking to change the, the type of unit? Now that should definitely, I mean, if we're going to do it that way, it should definitely be specific yeah. to what we are actually going to be able to bid both yeah. systems. I was yeah. just going to say, can, you, can people bid both? Bid both systems, yeah. yeah. And then we have that comparison to go to. You know, it opens up the usability in the summertime with the air conditioning units instead of trying to pop <coughs> it or something. Without a condenser, just actually just putting in the furnace. Just putting in the furnace, and if we decide to go, you put the plenum in, and you get the, the unit, you know, later on. So that would have to change this resolution, correct, Jordan? I think that it should have the language be changed. I mean, we could do it from the floor here. I mean, I don't think there's any issue with respect to that. Um, but I think more importantly, as far as the actual bid specs and proposal that are that are sent out. Right. Um, yeah. That needs to be 100% specific. Did, this, did the specs go out? Or they haven't gone out yet. This is going out. No, it's got to be advertised in yeah. the newspaper Saturday. they will be okay. available Monday. We can get it changed if you want. So does this include the museum too? We're talking the whole that community center. Is that the old church and the museum all in one? No, right now, it's one complete system. Right with the. It does not cover the museum. No, it, it, doesn't doesn't cover the it does not cover the museum. The museum is a separate building. Okay. So Can what I say something? I wish someone would make a commitment that we're going to save this building and that we're going to utilize this building. You're talking about spending money on roofs, boilers, etc. Are we going to save this building? The answer was yes the last time. That's all. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. For how long? Oh. So, <laughs> let, me ask, let, me ask, let me ask our lawyer. Should we table this and, re, and revisit it? Or, should, or can we amend it orally now? And uh, Actually, well, all we have to do is just remove the, the hot water and just put in heating system. If you, if you remove it, replace it with uh, new hot water. Remove hot water boiler and just put in hot, uh, heating system. Heating system. Heating You've covered whatever system it is. Uh, and yeah. and then as far it. as the specs are concerned, you guys can do that. Specs can and change you, can do that. you can do that, yeah, and right? Maybe the walkthrough. We yeah. I, talking about that. To answer your question, I have no objection on having that change right now. Um, in order to be able to do that, and then the official resolution will have exactly what it is okay. that we uh, have agreed to place in there. All right. All right. Well, I, I want to make a motion. Yeah. I guess I'll, and then I'll, I'll make a motion that we amend resolution number nine seven one seven to include the to include the language that says uh, what, how, heating he, uh, heating system. Yeah. New, so heating, be, new, new, new heating system as opposed to. Hot water. Hot water. Hot water boiler. Yep. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Any other discussions? Call the roll, please, Dave. Councilman Tornsell. In favor. Councilwoman Diamond. In favor. Uh, Mayor Patricell. In favor. And Your Honor, that concludes new business for this evening. Mm -hmm. Appropriations of county? Um, I think I sent you the council the list of checks for January. Can I ask a couple questions? Sure. I'm, I'm, there's just there's two that just and I don't just because I don't know what they mean. I'm not one of them's on, on page nine it's with for the fire department. It talks about professional am, ambulance billing, monthly billing services mm -hmm. for December 4581. What's that? What was that for? Uh, so we do not do the actual collections for ambulance billing here in the city. We uh, outsource that to professional ambulance billing, and that that is their fee for that service. So the uh, the the fee for the billing service is forty five hundred dollars a month. 
roughly? Yeah, it's, it's roughly 50 grand a year. 50 grand a year, and you break it up to 12 to 12 months, okay. Yep. All right. And I got another one, and I, I may have read it wrong, I don't know. And on, the, on page 10, it had to do with police, and it said miscellaneous supplies, and it was $2,100. Was that? Uh, I will get back to you on that. Okay. I don't know. Right. Well, Chief, I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, but I couldn't figure yeah, it out. I thought 2100 for miscellaneous was kind of. Do you know who it was written out to? I, I don't. Okay. I don't. It's, it was just a couple of them that I, again, I didn't understand. I didn't. Page 10. Page 10. Yeah, I'll try and get back to okay, you at the end of the meeting. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, then um, we'll go into public comment here. At this time, the council is authorized a public comment period. If you would wish to address the council, you must step forward, state your name, address for the record, and you'll have two minutes to address the council on any matters that you wish. No comments uh, being made. We'll uh, end closing the, uh, the whoa, comment period. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Hold on. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hold and move. I was waiting. <laughs> Nobody listens to me, so what's it sound like? Well, I agree with you, Paul, but not true. we got to give up. Can't give up. Don Whitehead, 1921 8th Avenue, Waterloo, New York. Outside this building, in that position, is the United States flag. There is no light on that flag when it was sundown. Either start taking the flag down or put the flag, the light back onto it. Was there a light? There was, and for some reason it was removed. Is it, is it, I'm sorry, the light's not there. There's there not like a no bulb burned. light it's not like at a all. Burned out. The there was a fixture in the ground that shined on the, on the flag, and when they redid around it, they took the light out for some reason. Okay. At the beginning of the meeting, there was a motion to accept the minutes of the previous meeting. Could you tell me which meeting you accepted the minutes for? The 22nd or the 20th, the 16th? see my date. Um, the 16th. Okay. The 16th. Well, you had a meeting on the 22nd. There's no meeting, minutes for that meeting. That was, that was a special that was a, meeting. That was a, uh, we were a special meeting for executive session, and I don't think uh, I didn't say that on the website. Okay. My next question is, where are the current council meeting minutes posted? And please don't say on the city website, because the last posted minutes are 926-19. They should be up on the city website. We will get those caught up as soon as possible. I Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Are there any other comments? All right. Then uh, I believe that we're going to be going into executive session. Uh, we'll close the public comment period, and that will be going into executive session. Um, we need a motion to go into executive session to discuss. I'll make a motion. Do we need to yeah, to discuss I. to discuss uh, certain collective bargaining uh, matters with respect to um, specific unions uh, and also with respect to pending uh, litigation with respect to um, one of the unions. One of what? Unions. 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 Oh. Make a motion that we go into executive session. I'll second that. Call the vote. Uh, Councilman Torrenzello. In favor. Councilwoman Diamond. In favor. Uh, Mayor Patricello. In favor. All right. I'll ask everybody if they can uh, eventually clear the room. We'll go into executive session and we'll re-adjourn to uh, close the meeting. But thank you everybody for coming tonight. I appreciate it. I know it's a messy night.